The thought of cutting into a hydraulic hose can fill you with dread. And then you've got the specialist tools and things like olives, barbs, hydraulic fluid, and then potentially having to bleed the system. It's like the cycling industry is being intimidating on purpose. But with the correct tools and a bit of know-how, you can do this sort of work yourself very easily. And in this video, I'm going to show you the step-by-step -step process of how you shorten a hydraulic hose. Now, the system I'm going to be working on today is Shimano. However, the basic principle is very similar across all hydraulic braking systems. Right, the first thing we need is a bike with a hose that needs shortening. New workshop gloves from Finish Line. Please are those, only eight pound, link below. Right, so let's take a look at the tools we are going to need to do this job. First of all, we are going to need a hydraulic hose cutting tool. Now you can spend an absolute fortune on these things, but that one is more than adequate for the job. You will need a tool to push the barb back into the hose. So you can get a fancy barb insertion tool like that, or you can get the basic clamp it with a hose and you use either a vise or a pair of pliers to clamp hold of the hose. You will need um, a sharp knife and some insulating tape if you are going to the bar tape end. You will need a compression olive and you will need a hose barb. You will also need a pencil to mark your hose where you're cutting it and you are going to need, drop the spanner, a seven and an eight mil spanner. I've lost my seven mil park tool spanner. It's been missing for about a year now. I'm most upset about it. Now you can go online and buy all of these bits and bobs that you need individually, or you can save yourself a lot of hassle, and you can go on Epic Bleed Solutions website and get yourself a hose shortening kit. Now this kit contains everything you need to shorten the hose, and it also includes the olives and the barbs, so you can do up to two hoses. Now, Epic Bleed Solutions isn't paying me to do this. I've used their stuff in the past, so because of that, I dropped them an email and said, hi guys, I'm doing this video. Do you want to send me one of your kits and I'll try it out? Which they did, along with a few other bits and bobs, including a bleed kit and this cool hoodie. So thank you very much to Epic Bleed Solutions. And if it turns out you need any other bits and bobs like um, hydraulic fluid or whatever to do the bleed, then you can get those individual bits from their website as well. Or alternatively, you can get yourself a complete bleed kit. Now, a little word of caution for you. Shimano hydraulic hose comes in two sizes, BH59 and BH90. So you'll need to know which size hydraulic hose you have so you order the correct barb for your hose. Now I'm working on modern hydraulic road shimano today so i am using bh90 if you are unsure go to the epic bleed solutions website and they've got a handy little chart on their website which tells you which one you need link below right that's all that explained right i need a bike and there you go as if by magic one bike with a ridiculously long <laughs> hose right as you will notice i have taken the um, wheels off this bike because it just makes my life easier for doing the video and walking around it and stuff but you don't necessarily have to take the wheels off of yours so don't feel you need to do the same thing now i've seen a few videos on this and how and people demonstrating how it's done and they always do it at the lever end i'm not entirely sure why they always say that and no one has ever suggested that you can do it at the other end so yeah if your hose runs freely through your frame like it does on this one, there's no reason why you can't actually do this work at the other end. Because the trouble with doing it at this end is you're unwinding the bar tape and there is a possibility you'd end up damaging the bar tape and having to replace it. So consider doing it at the other end. But for the purposes of this video and to make it the most complicated job as possible, I am going to do it at the bar end so you can see how that's done. A little word of caution though, if you do decide to do it at the caliper end, little tip for you, turn the bike upside down if you're doing the front, otherwise if you've got it this way up and you undo it at the caliper end, then the brake fluid is just going to run out of the hose. So the first job we need to do is expose the hose. So very carefully unwind your bar tape, go nice and slow and carefully unwind it. Peel the hood back like that. Right, then what we need to do get a 
sharp knife and you'll find that the hose is taped to the bars. So just get your knife and very carefully undo that. Once all our tapes cut away, all we then need to do is using our eight millimeter spanner, carefully undo the hose at the lever end and carefully unplug the hose from the lever. And you can let the flaring nut slide down the hose. Let it go down there out of the way. The last thing you want is for it to drop off the end and you go to put everything back together and you put the olive on just to realize that that's on the floor of your workshop. So let that slide down. And from this point on, it's really, really important to remember two things. First of all, do not let this hose ping around and let the, the, the fluid shoot out of it. And just as important from this point, do not pull that lever. If you pull that lever, all of the hydraulic fluid that's in the lever will shoot out the back of it and then you'll be bleeding the whole system. And the next stage is to work out where you want to cut your hose. What you want to do here, hold the hose on the bar and move the handlebars round to make sure that everything is moving freely and you're not putting too much tension on this hose. You don't want to shorten it so short that when you go to turn the handlebars, it pulls and the handlebars won't turn all the way. And then get your pencil. And I think that one for me, that's about right. So that's a good couple of centimeters off this. And now we can look at cutting our hose. Right, we've measured, we've triple checked it and we can confidently say where we're doing our cut. So now we're ready to cut the hose. Now, the most important thing here is the hose must be at a 90 degree angle to the blade. And there you go, that's perfectly good. I'm happy with that. Squeeze down, cut the hose. Double, triple check it. That's perfect. Next job <clears throat> is to put your olive on. Now, some people, they put the barb on now. Personally, I always say put the olive on because if you put the barb on and you push the barb in a long way and it flares the hose slightly, you may end up struggling to get your olive over past it. So I think it's always good practice to put it on now and then we can put the barb on afterwards. The next job is our barb and we start by putting that on by hand. I've got a couple of tools to show you to put this barb in, but Either way, we start by pushing it in as far as we can by hand like that. All right, so as I was saying earlier, uh, there are a couple of tools that we can use to drive the uh, barb into the hose. Now, if you're doing this sort of work very rarely, then the little plastic blocks that come with the Epic Bleed Kit is more than enough. And all you do is you put these around the hose. Hear the geese flying over ahead put that round the hose like that, and then you clamp the tool, holding it tight. And what this does is it grips the hose for you, and then it allows you to drive that pin in. Now, I'll do some, I'll do some close ups on the bench, but you can either do this uh, with a vise, which is not always convenient when the hose is on the bike, or you can get a pair of grips like this and hold it. And then you just get a hammer and you drive that in. Now, if on the other hand, you're doing this sort of work more frequently and you're maintaining a few bikes, then you might want to look at a tool like this. It's a barb insertion tool. And how this works is you insert the hose. I'll try and do it so I can show you. I'll also do it on the bench. You insert the hose into the tool. And then what you do is you clamp this down. And this clamp holds the hose tight for you. And then, you can wind the tool. Let me come around there so I can see what's going on. You wind the tool and that basically drives the barb into the hose, like so. And then you just unwind it, take the clamp off, and there you go. That has driven the barb in for us. Next job is we apply a small amount, just a little bit, a small amount of grease to both the olive and the flare nut. Just a small coating. And now we need to insert our hose back into the lever. Now you're pinching the final bit up using your spanner. Just double check your hose is all the way in before you do it. And then pinch that nut up 
using your 8mm spanner. Now, in Shimano's case, they recommend 5 to 6 newton meters of torque. It's unlikely you're going to have that tool, so common sense is the rule here. Just pinch it up. There you go. Now everything's back together, we can test the system. So I put my back wheel in, which now means I can pull the lever. And if you're lucky, no air has got in and no fluid has been lost and your braking won't be affected. What you need to do is feel your brakes, see how they feel. Do they feel firm or is there excess travel or do they feel spongy? So let's first of all test mine. So as I say, I put my back wheel back in, now I can pull the lever. And as we can see, that, that, that brake is working, but there is now excess travel and the lever would hit the bar, as we can see there, look. So it would seem a little bit of air has got in, so we're just going to need to bleed the system to get that air out. Right, so first job is just to secure my hoses and cables. Here we go. Now all I need to do is start to wind the bar tape back onto the bars and tape it at the top. So that's my bar tape wound back on, just put on the finishing tape. I always use insulating tape and then put this finishing tape over the top. Peel the hoods back. And we can now address that bleed. This is not by any stretch a full brake bleed. If you want to see a video on that, I'll link it at the end or it's up there. All we're doing here is getting the air out of the system that's managed to get trapped in there. Right, so let's first of all look at the tools we're going to need to do this job. You will need a bleed funnel, a bleed funnel and the little adapter that connects it to your road hood a bleed block that goes in and replaces your brake pads on the caliper end. Something to push the pads apart. The official tool is something like that. That's the one from Park, but you could also just as easily do it with the rubberized end of your long nose pliers, for example, or a tire lever. You're going to need those pliers to pull the little pin out of the brakes. You're gonna need that to unscrew the pin out of the brakes, and you're going to need to replace the air with some brake fluid. Don't worry, you won't need as much as that. Now, you could, uh, once again, I will link all of these parts below, or alternatively, once again, our friends at Epic, they do a full kit. This includes the funnel and absolutely everything. Um, and you can use this to either, as I say, burp the system is what we're doing now, or if you wanna do the full bleed where you replace the fluid, that will do it as well. Or as I say, you can just buy the individual components. Link to both below. Right, so let's take our pads out. And to do that, we will need these long nose pliers and a small flat screwdriver. Get your pin, pop your pin out, put it somewhere safe. Take the pad axle out, once again, somewhere safe. Now, when I do this work, I don't wear my workshop gloves because over time they get greasy and you're mucking around with your brake pads. So it's good practice to do this bare hand. And get your pads out. It's a great opportunity to have a look at your pads, see how worn they are and see if they need replacing. I'm gonna be replacing the pads while I'm doing this anyway, because Gorilla Brakes has sent me their new pad to try out. I will do a separate video on this, but yeah, new pads from Gorilla. These are their latest all singing, all dancing pads, and I'll be chucking a set of those in afterwards, but watch out for a proper video for that. Right, so now we've got that out, we need to push our pads back, and we can do that with either the official tool, or, as I say, you can also do it if you've got a pair of pliers or a tire lever or something a bit spongy. You've just got to be careful with the brake piston. You don't want to put any excess pressure on the piston. So you can do this either with the official tool, like so. What we're doing is we're just pushing the pads, pushing the uh, piston, sorry, just pushing them in. But you can do this also with a pair of long nose pliers, like so. Just move the pads enough so we can then get our bleed block and put it where our pads were. Use the pad axle to hold it in place and there you go. That 
is all we need to do at that end. Now what we do is depending on your group set, if you are using a mechanical group set like this one, then you will find your bleed port, get a screwdriver to get this off, you will find the bleed port at the front. But if you are running something like a DI2 group set from Shimano, then you'll find it actually behind. But there we are, that is what we're looking for, the bleed port. Now we have the bleed port exposed, we just need to remove the bleed port bolt. Now, sorry, tool I forgot to mention when I was listing tools, this particular one, two and a half mil Allen key. It's good practice just to put a cloth around here because there is a chance that you might spill a little bit of fluid as you're doing this and that will just catch it for you. So using your two and a half mil key, that clicks normal. You spin that off. Now, when you remove, just look out, there is a little rubber washer on there. Be careful you don't lose that, otherwise you're gonna have problems. Pop that to one side. Then what we do is we get our funnel, this funnel by default won't fit this lever, it needs an adapter. So put that adapter on the bottom of your funnel. Like your bleed block, your retailer should have included that with your levers. That comes with the levers. Attach the funnel. Just pinch tight. Next, we add a small amount of fluid to the funnel. Once our funnel is topped up, drop the bike forward, not too far, you don't want it pouring on the floor. Lock your stand back up again. Take your plunger out, put it somewhere safe, not dirty. And just give the lever a little pump on and off and you'll see the air bubbles come out. You can also encourage it by grabbing your screwdriver or similar and just tapping the hose just to encourage the air up out the system. And what you can also do is you can get the bike, tip it up and down different angles just to try and encourage the air out. Once you're confident you've got all the air out, pop your plunger back in, release your maintenance stand, put your, back, your bike back up to a workable angle and do your maintenance stand back up. And now making sure your plunger is in there, you can carefully unscrew it all. And we can get that and put it back on the bowl and let it trickle back in. Next we get our bleed screw, complete with the little O-ring on it and reattach it. Just pinch it up. Sensible tight, not too tight. Get some good quality brake cleaner. This is Crankalicious. I use this one a lot. People that have been following me for a while know I've always banged on about this one. Uh, you get a little bit more for your money. It's a good quality product and it's a bit more controllable with a thing in your bottle. There you go. And fill the hoods back on. There you go. Now let's test the lever. It's much more like it. All that's left for me to do now is fit those new brake pads, which I'm not going to do on this video because it's dragged on for long enough as it is and you're probably bored of it all. Now, if you want to do a full brake bleed, check out that video up there where I show you the full process. Alternatively, if you did end up knackering your bar tape, then why not check out that video down there where I show you how to do the perfect bar tape. Thanks for watching.